Well, I just want to say that I am delighted to come before many of y'all on this evening in order to uh, talk to you about a very uh, familiar subject on, to, on, on today. Uh, matter of fact, I felt the need to be able to address uh, that of this uh, particular issue that I'm going to be talking about today, and I hope that uh, you will also uh, be ready to uh, take on what I'm about to share on today. I want to say to those of you who have been following us on Facebook Live, uh, I want to say right now we are on YouTube video, and so we are going to be uh, start going on uh, YouTube in order for us to have a more broader platform. I really believe that uh, our ministry, as well as this message, uh, has um, uh, pretty much well outgrown that of uh, Facebook Live. And so it is time to eventually move on, in which we are going to move on in order for us to more of, uh, have a more of a broader, bigger platform, because uh, this ministry is greatly needed uh, all over the world, not only in the United States, but all over the world. And so I really believe that there is a need to be able to uh, talk about uh, that of this particular issue I'm going to be talking about on today. And uh, mind if I just ask that you tag someone to let them know that I am on Facebook Live uh, on YouTube on today. And I uh, love to be able to have you to tag someone today and let them know that uh, Pastor Daryl Miller is on uh, YouTube. And also, I just want to say tag as many people as you can. Also, you can be able to comment on what I'm about to share on today. And so, uh, I want to say, first of all, I want to just kind of more like start it off by saying uh, <clears throat> a good evening. Uh, and so once again, I just want to just go ahead and, and, and share that. So just bear with me. Just bear with me on today. Amen. Just bear with me on today. And so. Um, Amen. I just want to say once again that this will be an opportunity for you to be able to share many of your comments if you have any questions as related to the topic of the subject matter on today. And uh, matter of fact, uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, and address this particular issue on uh, how mind control works, how mind control works. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to be looking at uh, these this particular passage of scripture in order to shed light upon what I'm gonna be talking about. I just ask that you bear with me uh, during this time because it is very important for us to understand how mind control works. Uh, there are those on social media uh, who are doing exactly what uh, Robert J. Lifton has been talking about, the eight criteria uh, for thought reform. And so I wanna say once again, I just wanna make it where you can be able to understand it. I'm gonna be able to talk about it uh, to be able to address this issue of how mind control works. And so uh, today I just want to just invite many of you all to come on in and join in, in with me on this evening. <clears throat> I know you're there. And so I just want to go, go ahead and join on in with me uh, on this evening as well. Uh, matter of fact, before we do that, I just want to give many of you all the opportunity to go and to tag someone uh, to let them know that Pastor Daryl Miller is on YouTube this evening. So this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and type in. I wanna say once again, uh, thank many of y'all who are jo just joining in with me on today. Uh, I wanna say once again, this is an opportunity for you to be able to share your comments as well as your questions. And so uh, this particular subject matter, I'm gonna be talking about how mind control works. And so uh, we're gonna look at uh, one particular, uh, a few particular passages of scriptures according to Romans chapter 16, uh, verses 17 uh, through 18. And then from that point, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to have our uh, word of prayer as well as us going into that of this live discussion on today, on this evening. So once again, I'm going to give you the opportunity to tag someone. I would need the first 50 people. Uh, to be able to uh, to join in with me on today. Matter of fact, go ahead and tag someone on this evening. Go ahead and tag someone. Come on now, come on now. I need the first 50 people uh, who can be able to go ahead and to, and, to, and to come on this live 
uh, YouTube channel. You can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. I want to encourage many of y'all uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And so uh, I want to say that once again, and I want to say once again, this is an opportunity for you to go ahead. Matter of fact, uh, those of you who have already joined in with me on this evening, uh, just let me know that you hear the audio. Let me know that everything is okay, that everything is clear uh, as well as the screen as well. So just uh, type in uh, the comments and let me know that uh, uh, you are uh, joining in with uh, me on this evening. So to, today we're going to talk about uh, the uh, talk about uh, uh, how does mind control works. Amen. Many people don't understand that when you are part of a, a toxic religious environment or perhaps an abusive church environment, uh, that many people don't even realize uh, that they are in a toxic environment where it comes to that of mind control. And so I wanna be able to talk about this on today. This is something that definitely need to be addressed. So go ahead, I'm looking on the screen. I want you all to let me know if you are joining in with me on this evening just tell me that hey past i hear you everything is okay i hear the audio and so this is an opportunity for you uh to be able to just join in on uh this evening other than that i want to say once again thank many of you all for joining in with me i pray and trust that what i'm sharing with you that you will be tremendously uplifted and encouraged uh, by what I'm going to share we, with you on today. So we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 16, verses 17 through 18. And it says here, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. It says in verse number eight, for those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word uh, on this evening. But other than that, I uh, just want to give you all an opportunity to go ahead and tax someone. Go ahead. I need the first 50 people that would that go ahead and, and come on tonight. Come on today during our YouTube uh, channel on today. Those of you who have not subscribed to that of our YouTube channel, you can describe you can subscribe today, and we welcome you to to, to be on our YouTube channel. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I want to say once again, uh, I'm going to give you a few more minutes in order for you to tag someone. I would need. The first 50 people uh, that would go ahead and tag someone and to let them know that uh, Pastor Daryl Miller is on YouTube channel. So I'm giving an opportunity now to tag someone. We need the first 50 people. Come on now. I know we get first 50 people that can come on our YouTube channel today. This is a day that many of y'all are off today. Uh, this is a this is a holiday by which you can. Uh, can be a part of this uh, live YouTube uh, channel on today. Amen. I'm giving you to give you a few more minutes so you can be able to go ahead and tag someone. Matter of fact, I want to see many of y'all's comments as I begin to share with you that of this important subject, how mind control works. Amen. Amen. I just want to say to those of you who are just who are just joining in, thank you for you being a part of. Uh, our uh, our face uh, our YouTube live uh, channel on today, Amen, Amen. I need to first get the people now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I know that uh, you can do it. Let's get to the first get the people to come on in and join on in on today. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into our live discussion on our YouTube channel on today. Uh, there was a need for me to be able to address this whole idea about how mind control works. Uh, it is very evident. It is very problematic within that of many of our churches today, and especially that of such uh, contemporary evangelicalism that comes under the form of the word faith movement. 
uh, perhaps maybe such oneness Pentecostal. Uh, also, unfortunately, uh, those who are Reformed fundamentalists, by which is a generic brand of Reformed theology. Uh, but uh, there is something that we definitely need to know, the basics. I won't be able to cover everything on this evening, uh, but it is necessary that you begin to understand how mind control works. Now, one of the fundamental uh, uh, concepts about mind control, and that is number one, and being able to get people to think uh, within the confined areas within that particular system of thought. Uh, matter of fact, they are not even uh, given the freedom or the liberality uh, or that they are prohibited from thinking outside of that immediate surrounding uh, group. And so everything uh, within the group, uh, those who are leaders of these particular groups, organization, uh, they consider their beliefs, uh, their ideology as being the ultimate truth. And so uh, this is something that is very troubling uh, by which uh, it is being uh, presented uh, within uh, many of those who call themselves uh, contemporary evangelicals. And so uh, it is not just cults out there that are using this type of technique, uh, uh, this type of strategy, uh, but it is being perpetuated among many professing Christians today and especially Christian leaders. And so I'm going to just kind of more like break it down to you so you can understand it to let you know how serious it is and that it is very, very problematic, amen. And so as I look at, as we begin to look at uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 17 through 18 says, now I urge you brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Let us bow our heads with a prayer. Oh, gracious and eternal Father, Lord, I just ask of God that you will forgive us for all of our sins and that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you, God, that we're able to come together as to be able to talk about this very important subject matter, how mind control work. In Romans chapter 16, verse 17 through 18, uh, fits right in with the theme of the subject matter of discussion. And Lord, I just ask of God that you would just give us the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of this particular issue uh, by which it is very important that people understand how mind control works. And that dear Heavenly Father, I'm asking you that you would just bless this discussion on this evening. Lord, I'm asking you that you would give me what I need to share with your people relating to the, the, this particular subject matter. Lord, I just ask you, God, that you would just open the minds and hearts of your people. Those who are there are those who were uh, previously or formerly a part of such toxic religious environment as well as such toxic leadership. I pray, Lord, that they would begin to understand the, uh, the, the mechanism of how thought reform works. And so, Father, uh, we just ask, oh God, that you bless the discussion on today. Lord, we just give the glory and the praise and in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go into this. Uh, matter of fact, I'm uh, while I'm uh, sharing this with you on today, I'm waiting for others to go ahead and join in with me on this evening. And the topic is how mind control works. How mind control works. Now, you may be asking a question, why is it necessary for you to address this particular subject matter? Matter of fact, uh, I understand what is going on and how people are being brainwashed or being indoctrinated. But I want to ask the question, do you really understand the true character and nature of what you call mind control or indoctrination? And so you got to understand that there are people who are part of groups 
who feel or who believe that it's the other group and not them. I have been on social media for a long time. And I began to sense and also observe the comments that people made as to them being a part or once a former member of a particular organization or church by which they experienced uh, such mind control or indoctrination. Now you gotta keep in mind that indoctrination does not take place overnight. It starts out with such piecemeal. Many times those who are cult facilitators, uh, they do not uh, uh, inform you as to what they are doing and how they are doing it. But while you're there, are you thinking that just because you uh, appear to be getting the word or perhaps you may be uh, experiencing some type of high spiritual worship or you being in the presence of God or that, you know, for some reason that God is working through that of this particular ministry organization by which you say it is a move of God, is a work of the spirit. But yet many of these facilitators, occult facilitators, uh, they are not going to uh, inform you as to how you are being uh, indoctrinated. As I said before, indoctrination does not take place overnight. It is very, very gradual. Matter of fact, it would start out as being on such a, a biblical track. But then as time goes on, then you begin to sense that something is fundamentally wrong because of how they view that of the Bible, how they view the scriptures, and to say that they believe that God's word is the absolute truth of God's word. They talk about that of the uh, that of the absolute truth of scripture. They talk about the inerrancy of scripture. They talk about the authority of scripture. But yet the Bible is not the center of the concentration of the cult leaders presentation. And those who are, who are uh, facilitators of such uh, cultic theology, as well as their doctrine. And so it starts out by being on a biblical track. You know, you think that you're getting the word and your sound, the, the, the teaching sounds good. You know, uh, you believe that you are getting some type of word from God by which God speaks to these self-proclaimed prophets are those who are prophetess. They begin to uh, say one thing in the public. And then as soon as you get behind closed doors, it's saying something differently. And that's how they use their members in order to be able to recruit those who they want to become a part of this move of this great move of God. They say one thing in the public. But then soon as you go behind closed doors, they are saying something totally different. You know, it's just like an advertiser, one who advertised. And they say, well, you know, uh, you know, once you apply for the job, they look for a certain person with a position or they can qualify for the position. They, they say that you're going to be making 15 on up to $20 an hour. That's what they say in the public because there is what you call false advertisement. And yet soon as you fill out the application and therefore you are being interviewed by the person who interviewed you concerning the job, once you once they feel once they feel a sense that you're qualified for the job, then you would have then they would hire you where you would have to go through what you call a training class. And many times once you complete the training class, then you begin to start working for the company. Well, by the time you work for the company, you know, you said it, they, they promise you in the public that you're going to be paid $15 to $20 an hour. They didn't say up to, but say $15 to $20 an hour. Then you found out as you begin to work there for a minute, now you discover that you're being paid $10 an hour. That is what you call not only false advertisement but also very deceptive by which 
They advertise. This is something that is very critical. This is something that you definitely need to know. And that's how cults operate. They advertise by saying one thing, but soon as you go behind closed doors, they are saying something totally different. Many times because of the inexperience and the naive of believers that they are not able to discern or to detect such deadly deception. See, the thing is that you have like the, the Unification Church, for an example, that would go out and to recruit members and they invite them to a lecture or some class and they invite them to eat dinner. That's how they're able to lure the perspective of, of prospective members within that of their group or organization. Many times when you attend these lectures or classes, uh, these are called classes that can, that can range from four to eight hours. Uh, and and, that, and, and that, that is indication that in order to, for a person to be indoctrinated, they have to go through this long course of, of hours of instructions and many times you're not even uh, allowed or, 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 to, or to even to even ask any question is is based upon a one-way communication it is not based upon a two-way communication and so it's about uh using others uh, within that of the group or organization in order to recruit others and many times once those who have been immensely uh, uh, recruited and then they were being proselytized. Even Jesus said they become more of a twofold child of hell than what they really are. We've got to understand that when it comes to mind control, this is very, very problematic, not only among cults, but also among those that are Pentecostals and Charismatics. Now you have the word faith movement. Now you have reform fundamentalists who are using the same technique or strategy. Now you have those on social media uh, that are doing the same. And what they do is, is that they talk about the issue of tithing. That, you know, the Christian is no longer obligated, that they're not obligated to, uh, to, 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 to pay tithes and offering. Uh, they begin to talk about that they talk wrong about tithing. And so, uh, it's a way to get people to let down their guards so that they, they won't be able to lose membership or to lose money. And so uh, they say this in order to, to get back uh, in, in line or to get back in line with the people that they have once ministered to. And so then they begin to use biblical terms that would be readily accepted by those who are under their influence or their leadership or their authority. They talk about biblical terms, terms like faith, the Holy Spirit, salvation, God, Jesus Christ. They, 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 they use terms that the average member can identify with, but yet they have what you call radically different meanings by which it is contrary to the clear teaching of scripture. Many cults, for an example, are cult leaders, they can use such biblical terminology at will, but yet they have what you call such uh, different meanings as to those terms. Let's take for an example, Jehovah's Witnesses use the term firstborn according to Colossians chapter one, the firstborn. But they would define firstborn as being God's first creation, that Jesus is God's first created being. But that is not the biblical understanding of the word firstborn. Firstborn implies rank and order. It has nothing to do with creation. Jesus Christ is not God's first created being. 
that is the Jehovah Witness or the Watchtower understanding of the word firstborn, even though they use the term firstborn. <clears throat> because like I said before, is that when you use biblical terminology, that they know that they would be in agreement or that it would resonate with the people that they come in contact with uh, by being able to present to them their watchtower beliefs, uh, ideology, or uh, 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 doctrines. Many times, Jehovah's Witnesses, for an example, serves as God's sa uh, as Satan's salesperson. And that's why the Apostle Paul declares, according to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 3, he said, But I fear lest by any means that the serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so they use such biblical terms, for yet they have radically redefined those terms. And not only have they radically redefined those terms, but they have given new terms placed on those original uh, terminologies or, or, or words. Redefining such biblical term, number one. And number two is to create new terms in order to try to appear that the term or the new term that they use is the same terms. One of the things that many cult leaders are saying, Mormon is an evangelical witness, they, they even bank on the fact that the average Christian is not going to question them as to what they actually believe about those terms. Because when you have a discerning Christian who has such experience in the area of such spiritual discernment, they are not going to be readily to agree with those who are followers of Watchtower theology. Because I remember years ago that there were Jehovah Witnesses that came to our doorstep. And mighty fact, they talk about the end of the times, what we thought about it, and blah, blah, this and that. Uh, that was just a way in order to have a conversation or to have a further dialogue or to, or to introduce that are such watch tower theology okay but all of a sudden we we decided to let him come into our home and i and i was i was prepared to 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 witness to these individuals they began to use their uh new world's translation and matter of fact as i was sitting there listening to them i noticed that there was a lot of uh pretexting and that of such this set of such biblical distortion uh matter of fact i said after I let them get through saying what they said, I said, I want to ask you the question. What is your understanding of who Jesus Christ is? They say, well, you mean God's son, Jehovah's son? I said, what is your understanding of who Jesus Christ is? Do you believe that Jesus is eternally preexistent, or do you believe that Jesus was created? They were in shock. They were surprised that I would even ask them that question. And what I did was I sit back while I was sitting there on the couch, while we in our living room. Because many times when you ask them those kind of questions, you have to just, you have to listen to how they define those terms. Who is Jesus Christ? What is your understanding of who Christ is? And as I began to listen to them, they said that. God's son, they use the term Jehovah. They don't use the term God, they say Jehovah. 
God's that that of his son was the first created being. They began to go to Colossians chapter one to prove their point. And yet, as I began to read the scriptures along with them, I realized that even within their own translation, many times that could be what you call uh, deletions of words or phrases or sentences within the text. Uh, matter of fact, for an example, they believe according they read in the New World Translation, it says in John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and a and the word was a God. So what they did was is that they uh, retranslated the text according to John chapter one, verse one. But then I began to began to respond to their question. And I say, well, if Jesus or if, 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 if Jesus is God, if Jesus is God's first created being, then why would the text says, according to Colossians chapter one, that he is the creator of all things, that all things were made by him and for him without anything was made. If you are the creator of your business or your company, how is it that you are not the creator? Even the scripture declares, according to Colossians chapter one, it says, and he is before all things. All things were made by him and for him. And he is before all things, not in the sense of creation, but that Jesus Christ is eternally preexistent, according to uh, John chapter 8, verse 58, when he said that before Abraham was, I am. And my point I'm making is this. Not only do Jehovah's Witnesses use freely that are such biblical terminology, but they redefine those terms like the word firstborn. Not only have they redefined those terms, but they have given new vocabulary by associating with those original terms. And matter of fact, the apostle Peter calls such men unstable and ignorant as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. This is how mind control works. is to use terms that are very much familiar. But those terms has to be defined within that of the culture or the social construct within that particular organization, a group, a cult. There are many alternative and new religious movements that are a melting pot within that of this country. There are what you call an assortment of religions by which people can choose from. There is what you call a religion of works, a religion of salvation, a religion of name it, claim it, a positive thought, a positive confession. There are many alternatives are ingredients of many false religions. Most of the false religions of the day believe that salvation is by works, not through grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. And so once people have been given such a warped view of the scriptures, or they have been given a warped view of the Bible, then their perception of who God is and the world around them and them viewing themselves become very much perverted. And so when it comes down to how mind control work, one of the things that I have noticed, and that is this, 
It is a way by which you can control communication or the control of communication. The control of communication is what a person read, number one, number two, sees, and number three, hear. This is how cult controls such information within that particular environment. Now, I'm going to break it down so you can understand it now. Because you can say it's not us, it's not us, it's them. But you have cult facilitators who are standing behind the pulpit, who are instructors in Sunday school classes as well as Bible study. Primary example, Mr. Dollar stated, and I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to read exactly what he said. Okay, to let you know how serious it is by which to, con con to control that of communication. How cults control such information within such environment. The control of human communication. Controlling the type of information that is being perceived are conveyed. Within my notes, I begin to give an example of the of the uh, primary example of how dollar in case number one. And keep in mind, I'm just not talking about only dollar because there are many who are like crippled dollar, who have gotten degrees in psychology our human behavior. This is something that you got to understand is how cult leaders control human communication. That is what you, what? Read, sees, and hear. Once the cult leader begins to control what you read, sees, and hear, that is a form of mind control. Because this is what Mr. Dollar says, for example. Be aware of what you allow to get into your spirit. Let me say it again. Be aware or what you allow to get into your spirit. In some of the words, it's going back to what you read, sees, and hear, and that's how cults control such information. Because within that of a cultic system or environment that the members are to read certain books. That is, for an example, it has to be within the confounds of that group organization. One example, they talk about faith and prosperity. There are many authors within that of the word faith movement that write books on what is faith? They write books on prosperity. They write books on how you can become healthy and wealthy and wise. They are encouraged to read those particular books, but they are forbidden or prohibited from reading other books outside of their environment or their organization because those who are outside of their organization they would consider them as being unenlightened fleshly and carnal by which they don't have faith that is a way by which you can control 
people's readership. They are not even encouraged to broaden our horizon, uh, 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 to broaden their perspectives on various issues. It is only within the constriction of that environment. They are not even encouraged to read other material outside of what they're reading. That's a way by which you can control such human communication. What a person read. And it's unfortunate that, that there are other groups and organizations that have fallen in fallen suit with the same tactic by prohibiting our forbidding its members from having a broader understanding and, pers and perspective of different views, different theology, our uh, philosophical ideals, our uh, ideology. Because if a person goes outside of that group or organization by reading other material that will contradict or that it will become critical of their articles or their, or their books on faith and prosperity, then Mr. Dollar says, be aware of what you allow to get into your spirit. The controlling of what a person read, sees, and hear. It's amazing. It's unfortunate that even among Reformed fundamentalists, they don't even encourage those who are part of, who attend the G3 conference, or the Shepherds Conference, or the Sovereign Nation to read books outside of their reform camp. They don't even read books on uh, uh, African-American authors because they don't believe that they have the intelligence to write a book or to write books. It is only within the, the confines of such readership. It is only within the confines of the construction of the environment. Prohibit its members from reading outside sources or material. Everything has to be within that of the constructs or the confines of such toxic environment. The way by which you control that of such human communication is that any particular group or organization or critics of their movement or their teaching or their theology or the authority of the leadership, they would consider such outside authority and influence as being satanic as being evil, as being a threat to the gospel, as being carnal, as to be unenlightened, as to be non-spiritual. That's how cult leaders indoctrinate their followers to believe that they are enemies enemies just because they do research and they critic you that of that organization or ministries teaching and leadership and authority because tolerance of such millennial environment prohibit their followers from reading books 
and outside religious authority that are critical of the cult's beliefs and ideology. Once again, Creflo Dollar coined this whole concept about the ear gate and eye gate by which many of his members completely shut down their unwillingness to dialogue or reason whenever their faith are being challenged. He talked about the ear gate and the eye gate. The ear gate is that you are not to listen to anybody that is outside world changers. Because Mr. Dollar says, we are world changers. That is making a mark that cannot be erased. That is the psychological phrase or catchy words. Because the moment, whenever you come in contact with the average member of world changers, that whatever beliefs that they had before has been totally emptied or washed out. These are individuals who don't think critically nor rationally. And so in other words, some people say that they are just tinker brain or air brain. Because the goal is to focus on what Mr. Dollar says. Everything that he teaches, how he perceive everything through the lenses of Dollarism. Everything has to be seen through the lenses of corrupt of dollar by which you said you must see everything through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. But in actuality, you are really looking at are you seeing things are you perceiving things through the lenses of dollarism. I remember years ago that uh, there was a young lady from California who were who joined World Changes Church International. Matter of fact, uh, we had an opportunity to talk years ago and she said something was not right. Uh, she did not complete the med class 099. Matter of fact, she actually gave me the new members manual. The 09, they called the med 099 as if you have a surgeon who does surgery on the mind of a patient whose brain has been deteriorated. The ear gate and the eye gate. The ear gate be careful in what you hear because if it's based upon such negative confession, then therefore you not to hear it. You must always think positive. You must always have a positive mindset and a positive outlook. Deny the reality for what reality is, and they use 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. You must not allow any faith-destroying words that come out of your mouth. Everything is based on faith, 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 faith. You must claim your healing based on wrong faith. You must claim your prosperity based on wrong faith. Everything is based on faith. But it is a unbiblical notion of what faith is. Faith is not in a force. Words are not the words that come out that become the container by which you speak your world into existence through faith. And they have actually castrate 
they have actually butchered Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 3. Don't allow what you hear. Destroy your faith. Everything is based on faith. Within that particular culture, a, 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 a social construct within that of that particular organization. It's unfortunate that I have to address this issue about Mr. Dollar, but uh, he and others are doing the same thing, like T.D. Jakes, Juanita Bynum, and others who are using such thought reform techniques. It's what a person read. Mr. Dahl talked about the ear gate and the eye gate. Everything has to be seen through the prism of such cultic leadership. The glasses by which you have on has to be removed by which to put on red roses of glasses in order to perceive and to understand and to know what color the tree. This is very dangerous and very problematic. We talk about the control of human communication. What a person read. Because many of the cult leaders members are not even encouraged, but yet they have been forbidden to read anything outside of the construct of con construction within that environment. Mr. Dollar talk about the ear gate. Now let's talk about the eye gate. Don't allow what you see destroy your faith. You must continue to stake your claim based upon 1 Peter 2.24. By his stripes, you are healed. Even though you have such symptom of cancer, you may be going through such excruciating pain. You must persevere in faith. Don't allow what you see destroy your faith. We walk by faith, according to 2 Corinthians 5. So we walk by faith and not by sight. So if you mean if you have a simple head cold or, or, or just a simple head cold, you, you don't do anything in order to in order to take some type of uh, Motrin or anything in order to be able to soothe that of your your, your, your head cold. But you are but you and but they encourage to deny the symptom of a head cold by staking their claim based upon first two to pre two to four they are permitted and they are they are forbidden to go to even a doctor in order for them to get the care that they need in order to be able to get take care of their their simple head cold but they yet deny the reality of what a simple head cold is they would not retreat they would not surrender by saying that i have a head cold so when you deny the reality of your head cold, then eventually it's going to lead into a migraine headache. And when you deny the migraine headache, then you find yourself going into convulsion by which somebody has to call 911 in order for the ambulance to come pick you up and take you to the hospital. And once you get to the hospital and then you begin to ask the doctor, what happened, doc? Doc says, in some words, you had a simple head cold, but you, but you being in denial about your simple head cold now has led into a migraine headache. Now you are in a in a in a in a in a state in a worse state by which it may be impossible for to be able to to uh, to to reverse the damage that has been done. For an example, if you have a symptom of cancer. You deny the symptom for what it is. 
and you stake your claim or you persevere in faith, even though you have what you call a, a, the symptom of cancer within your body. But long as you continue to deny the cancer in your body, the cancer is going to spread. That is what you call the carcinogenic diet of faith. Because faith in itself, based upon such carcinogenic diet of faith, become very toxic and asinine. Don't allow what you see destroy your faith. What you see is not what it is, according to faith theology. What you experience, what you're going through, is not what you are experiencing. It's just the devil's way of trying to trick you concerning your faith. You got to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. So be careful in what you see. What you see is not what it appears to be. But in reality, what you see or what you experience is what it is. And it's unfortunate that there are many within that of the word faith movement or these faith leaders would say, okay, well, okay, well, just go to the doctor. Because you know why? The reason why they go to that, because they didn't got their hand caught in the theological cookie jar. Now they want to encourage their members to go to the hospital. And many times they go to the hospital without no one knowing anything about it. Are them going to the doctor, going to the hospital. So they say, well, just go on to the doctor. But as your faith grows, then you can wean yourself from the doctor as well as the medicine. I can say this, that I experienced my dear sister who was a part of a hyper faith church who deny the doctor's recommendation and medicine. My late sister, who was slow in learning. Mother wanted to find out why is it that my sister was slow in learning. But years later, they took her to the hospital. My mother took her to the hospital. Years later, my sister was diagnosed as having a brain tumor. And when a person has such brain tumor, it deteriorates the brain by which it would be difficult for them to be able to, to learn and to be able to, to, to learn in a way and to, and, to, and to catch on because of the deterioration within my sister's brain. She was taught that if she went to the doctor, she did not have enough faith or that sin was in her life. She was giving such medication. She was also given such medical advice and attention. But soon as she left the hospital, everything that was given to her is fed as a medicine and going according to the doctor recommendation recommendation she threw everything out the window and then the unfortunate was that she was rushed back to the hospital my sister my late sister Tanya Yvette Arlen was lying there in the hospital, in the hospital bed. A 
and lying there. By which she was unconscious. For two weeks. She never woke outside of her conscience. She never woke up. My dear sister died at the age of 18 years old of a brain tumor. But she never woke up outside of her coma. She never woke up. At an early age, 18 years old. Can you imagine the emotion and the pain that my mother went through because she birthed her in the world? That was my dear sister. There was confusion, misunderstanding, want to know what happened, why it happened. As a matter of fact, I had the opportunity to try to make contact with a pastor for over several years and never responded back to my email. I was given cassette tapes during that time where I heard him speak about the mere fact of the doctor and the medicine. And if you went to the doctor, then therefore there was sin in your life. And so, you know, uh, you didn't have enough faith. And so as a result of that, my sister died of a brain tumor. We talk about the presumptuousness and the foolishness of such toxic faith. So Mr. Dollar talks about the ear gate and the eye gate. Don't allow what you hear. Deter or destroy your faith. Don't allow what you see deter or destroy your faith. We must interpret God's word through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. But in actuality, everything has to be interpreted through the lenses of Dalism. We talk about the we talk about how mind control works. Because when you look at everything through the prism of such cultic leadership, then you have a blurred vision or understanding of what reality is, or even accepting the reality of for what reality is. We talk about the control of human communication. Last but not least, let's talk about the control of human, human communication within a cult system or an environment or an ideology or a toxic belief system. Thirdly, the control of human communication is what a person hear. They are forbidden to hear any unfortunate news, anything that is consists of negativity, anybody who says that they didn't have a bad day, you are not to listen to that. It's always you being too negative, you being too negative and being too negative. How in the world that you are being negative when someone says that they are experiencing such pain are mishaps in life because we live in a sinful fallen world by which we all can experience such mishaps in life. That's not something that you can avoid. The thing that we experience, the thing that we go through, the thing that we see and observe, that's not negativity. That's not making some negative confession of faith by which someone shares with you the experience by which they experience. That's not negative. That's reality. It's amazing how that when someone asks you, 
how was your day? The first thing they want to say, I am highly blessed and favored by the Lord. I didn't ask you that. How was your day? Did you have a good day? Oh, you didn't have a good day. We as Christians, we're going to have some ups and we're going to have some downs. But many faith leaders have indoctrinated their members that even if you're going through something, don't talk about what you're going through. Just talk about how blessed and favor you are, that you are prosper, that you are whole, that you are well, that you are the head and not the tail. That you are prosperous. Even the faith leadership don't even want to hear any unpleasant, unfortunate news from its members, even though they may be going through such pain, they may experience what they experience, but they don't want to hear that because it is not within their theology or their worldview. This is not being mean spirited just because you tell the truth because when it comes to the truth, it has to be based upon conviction and passion and not you being mean-spirited. But that's how these faith leaders would put within the minds of their followers that we're mean-spirited, that we are haters, that you don't like me, is always putting in the minds of their members that you are problematic. But really, who is really problematic? Is the ones who deny the very thing that they experience. I've been healed of meningitis, prostate cancer, just because of my faith and my belief and my stance based upon scripture by me uh, staking my claim based on God's word. But if you don't go to the doctor and seek such medical help, find out what's going on, you're going to find yourself with a cold body in the casket. This is how mind control works. I am talking about the control of human communication. What a person read, what they see, and what they hear. That's how indoctrination take place. And there are those who are under such toxic leadership and toxic environment. They are not aware of what is being taken place. They are not aware of the subtleties and the progressiveness and the gradual of such mind control. Because these are, in, these are people who are inexperienced when it comes to spiritual discernment. We got to be slow to speak and quick to hear. It is just not cult leaders out there. They're right inside the walls of the church that wave the flag, Jesus is Lord. talk about how mind control work and that is controlling the communication of people or the control of communication what a person read what they sees and what they hear that's how cults control such information 
and especially within that of that particular environment are the constriction or the construct of that environment. They claim to be Bible teachers, but they are defunct or default theologians. Claim to be Bible teachers, anointed by God to give the message of faith, prosperity, and healing. But they are default within their theology. The only way they can control human communication is to control what people read. If it's not within the constructs of that environment, then anything outside of that group or organization is considered evil, unenlightened, impure, and satanic. Any researcher or those who are, critic, who are critics of their movement or their organization, they are forbidden or prohibited from reading such material information. Because once people begin to start reading other materials and other books and research material concerning their particular group or organization or leadership and their authority and their teaching, then therefore it's going to open up their understanding of the fact that they are a part of a cultic system that have robbed them of their ability to think in such to think critically for themselves the control of human communication not only what a person read but also what they see don't allow what you see rob you or destroy your faith. You must continue to stake your claim based on the scriptures. You must make some verbal affirmation of faith or such positive confession of faith. You must not allow anything that will rob you or to destroy your faith. You must walk by faith and not by sight. So whatever you experience or even the pain by which you experience such pain in your body, you must deny it at the expense of faith. Whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be experiencing, you must deny it. Because if you look at the symptom of cancer within your body, that is destroying your faith. That is the way, that is the way by which the devil or Satan is going to trip you up in your faith. That is illogical, irrational. And at worst, anti-rational. Because the reality in it is this, within this faith system and the real world by which the world is the way the world is and the experience by which we experience in life, it becomes a conflict and a discrepancy. There are people who would hold on to such uncherished beliefs that is a discrepancies to what they believe and what they experience. 
last but not least. Mr. Dollar talked about the ear gate and the eye gate. The ear gate and the eye gate. The ear gate. Be careful what you hear. If it's not based on faith or it's not based upon this system of faith theology, then you ought to reject it. Because the kind of faith they're talking about is not based on biblical faith. It is more of a toxic faith that had nothing to do with biblical faith. Well, let me, let me, let me ask you this question, and I'm going to close out. When you say that you have enough faith in order to remove mountains by you speaking words of faith, ah, uh, let's decide. Let's let's go up to the hundred story uh, story building, and you say you have enough faith that when you jump off of the one hundred story building, and once you hit the pavement then you're able to get yourself up and dust yourself off. But the reality is, when you jump from a 100-story building because of your mountain-moving faith, once you jump from that 100-story building, once you hit the pavement, you will not be able to get up not to even shake yourself off. That is what you call presumptuous and reckless faith. There are many who talk about fear over, or faith over fear. But yet there are many Christians who have died of COVID because of their faith over fear not practicing social distancing, not uh, putting on their mask, and, and not only that, taking the vaccine. That is suicidal. That is what you call suicidal faith. If and when you experience such pain in your body, you don't deny the pain by which you experience. If you have the symptom of cancer in your body, you don't deny the reality of the symptom of cancer within your body that you must go to the doctor in order to get examined and to be diagnosed and not deny the reality of the symptom of cancer in your body. Because when you deny the symptom of cancer in your body, it begins to spread. And once it's spread, it begins to terminate your life. People who have this type of carcinogenic faith, they don't have a good track record by which they can communicate, by which they can re reason with other people. So don't listen to the ones who says, what you see is not what it is. It appears to be what it is, but it's not what it is. But it is what it is. Because you don't want to experience pain in your body. You don't want it's going through marital problems. You don't want it's going through so many, so much difficulties in your life. And that's a part of life. Just because you are a Christian, that doesn't mean that you're not going to experience difficulties, trials, and tribulations. Because it is the trying of our faith that work in patience. And let patience have its good word that you may that you may be in cheer and in time lacking nothing. You as a Christian is not guaranteed that you're gonna have a have a cancer-free, problem-free life. We live in a fallen world that has real problems, that has real issues, 
That's a part of life. And we are not exempt from that, even though we are Christians. So in closing. Don't allow what don't allow be aware of what you allow to get into your spirit. Five minutes a dollar. That's comedy main. Be aware of what you allow to get into your spirit. He talks about the ear gate and the eye gate. Do y'all understand the psychological theme or the mechanism when they make when he make these kind of statements? The ear gate and the eye gate. It's a way to isolate you by you being isolated within that of a toxic religious environment. The constriction within that environment. Not only to isolate you by you being isolated within this environment, but also that a strangulation and suffocation of you being able to think critically, reasonably, and rational. Because within that of such faith system or environment, that faith has precedent over reason. That, that reason is an enemy of faith. Re faith and reason is not an enemy, but they're bedfellers and not enemies. So we have to be like the Christians at Berea, according to Acts chapter 17, verse 11. And that they searched the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. It's not only Mr. Dollar. There are others who have followed in Dollar's footsteps. Even Paul said, according to 2 Timothy 3.13, but evil men and imposters shall become worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. When it comes to that of such mind control or indoctrination, it is not only problematic, but it's real. It's dangerous. It is unhealthy to the spiritual and everyday lives of God's people. Even those who don't know him. I pray and trust that what I share with you on today, that you begin to look from a broader perspective, not from a narrow, standpoint realize that when you're in a house it does have windows in order for the breeze of air to come through the house in order to feel and to smell the breeze of air you have to let the blinds open and open up the windows so the air can come or the breeze of air can come to the house but within a cultic system you're made to believe that there are no windows that is surrounding the house. You are not even, you are not even can carriage, but you are forbidden to open up the blinds and to open up the windows so the breeze or the air breeze can come to the house. Death in itself is toxic in and of itself. It breaks down a person's conscience by which it numbs their ability to think critically for themselves as well have no sense of moral sensibility. The Apostle John said, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits of whether God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 
This is Reverend Daryl Mill. I'm the host of the Daryl Unplugged podcast. I want to encourage many of y'all to subscribe to that of this particular podcast, Facebook. Subscribe to it. We encourage you to be prayerful and supportive of this particular platform. Once again, I want to encourage you to subscribe to it. Once again, may God bless you, may keep you. This is just on the beginning. It hasn't got started yet. May God bless you, may keep you. We love you and God love you too.